Okay, I got a question here from Julian DJG. Um, he's basically got this issue where he starts up his Windows and it doesn't really quite boot up all the way. It brings him to the menu there and he chooses an option and it automatically restarts it, takes him back to his HP screen and it does the same thing again. Uh, so what you really want to do here is get to the root of your problem here. You want to actually figure out what's causing that issue. And what you want to do is right after your HP screen shows up, you want to start pressing your uh, F8 key. And what this is going to do is it's going to give you a menu kind of like this one here. Um, where you're going to go through and choose a option here called disable automatic restart on system failure because what's happening to you is um, your system isn't just really kind of auto restarting it's actually blue screen crashing out and then restarting the thing is Windows isn't showing you the blue screen because it's set to automatically restart on system failure every time so once you go through select this option you'll actually see the blue screen error code that's causing this for you and with that you're gonna get a couple common uh, blue screen errors most likely uh, one of which is gonna be an unmountable boot volume message um, if you're getting that that means your file system's gotten corrupt one way or the other uh, it could be due to a power outage or fluctuation that caused your system to uh, basically write a little bit of gibberish to your hard drive and it's just not able to be used by Windows. Uh, in that event you can usually use something like the Ultimate Boot CD to go through and uh, basically repair that file system. You can also use something like the Windows Recovery Console and do the same thing. Um, usually with the unmountable boot volume using a check disk will get that taken care of um, I'll make a separate video on how to do a check disk um, but it's pretty simple um, you can even just right click on a hard drive and select it if you want to do it that way uh, if you have a booting uh, Windows copy but anyway um, another one you might get is a error 7b uh, series of messages and that one's a little bit trickier. Um, you could have something going on with a piece of hardware in your system or outside your system like uh, a printer or a USB device or something you might have hooked up uh, externally to your system. It can sometimes cause that 7B message. Um, first thing to do if you get a 7B is go through and disconnect anything um, extra. You know, Keep up your uh, keyboard, mouse, and uh, monitor of course and if your system still does a 7B then you might have some other kind of uh, hardware related issue where it could even be the drivers themselves have somehow gotten corrupt or damaged uh, which goes back to the corrupt file system issue uh, and in some cases I've even seen that be related to a virus uh, where the virus goes through basically fiddles around with the uh, driver files themselves and causes them to get corrupt or damaged and causes an error 7b. Uh, another thing you want to do is if you are getting a message saying file system is corrupt, uh, unmountable boot volume or the crazy 7b series of error messages, uh, go through and basically just verify your hard drive is in good working order um, using a utility like Spinrite or HD Tune um, with the ultimate boot CD you can basically see if your hard drive is getting smart errors and that's an indicator it, yeah, it could be starting to have issues um, if the check disk does not fix the issue what you want to do is uh, basically reload that partition uh, if you go through and run a Windows repair on a corrupt partition, it can uh, fix the issue for the short term, but you may see the issue again later down the road, or 
it might even just fix it, you know, indefinitely, but usually it comes back and ends up biting you in the rear if you got a corrupt file and it's caused by a corrupt file system. Uh, but that's the gist of that, how you can go through diagnose, diagnose your issue there. Um, I definitely recommend testing out the stuff before you go through and do something like a Windows repair or a um, full reload of the system. You know, Go through and basically figure out what the root cause of it is because it could be something completely uh, unrelated or something completely different than what you might be expecting and as a result uh, you could end up reloading your system and you don't have to so uh, like I said hope that answers your question if you got any more questions on it feel free to message me and uh, until next time I'll see you later